What is up YouTube? It's your girl Evelyn and today I want to highlight some upcoming shows and films featuring queer lady characters. So sit back, enjoy the video, and if there are any upcoming shows or films I've missed, please let me know in the comments. I sit on the corner and shift my shit. Now I'm gonna give y'all another hit. Despite being one of the most bizarrely reviled shows of the 21st century, HBO Max darling Velma is back at it again with an allegedly sexy Halloween special in which our girl attempts to you know, rise from the dead. Today is Halloween. We only have 19 hours to bring you back. Nothing can stop us. <laughs> The aptly titled Velma, This Halloween Needs to Be More Special, follows Velma and the Scooby Gang as their preparations for a sexy Halloween bash get sidelined by malevolent spirits conquering their deepest fears and of course, Velma being dead. Now, y'all already know my personal opinions on the show Velma. It's not that bad. But that being said, in my opinion, this Halloween special is very ungood. And speaking as someone who truly does not hate Velma the way the entire internet seems to, I could barely make it through this episode. It felt haphazardly thrown together with little to no care. But if you want to check it out for yourself, you can catch Velma This Halloween Needs to Be More Special October 3rd on HBO Max. If there's one thing that keeps me up at night, it's the fact that Scrabble, that classic Hasbro word game beloved by all of your friends that are smarter than you, has yet to be made into a TV show. I mean, seriously, what the fuck? The clue is television. I'm gonna go for... Uh... Oh. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Scrabble is now a television show. This is the best day of my life. Hosted by none other than one of my favorite queers in existence, Raven Simone. And based on the few clips I've watched, the show is fun, family friendly, and of course, our girl Raven is hilarious. Also, I was today years old when I learned that it is possible to play Scrabble professionally, like as your job job. That's the best thing I've ever heard. So all you wordsmiths out there can catch Scrabble October 3rd on the CW. If this is to end in fire, then we should burn. One of the most underrated and underwatched shows of 2022 is back for its third season. The Legend of Vox Machina is a adult animated series based on Critical Role, a Dungeons and Dragons actual play web series that follows a group of friends who basically travel around the world fighting various types of villains, including vampires, dragons, and doors. What if I heat the metal and melt the lock? <laughs> This is imported silk. Now, even though The Legend of Vox Machina isn't super duper gay, there is a smattering of queer characters throughout the series, including an adorable sapphic couple. And as someone who has never played Dungeons and Dragons, I love this show so much. It's hilarious, it's fun, it's surprisingly moving, and even a little dark and a lot violent. So if that sounds like your cuppa, you can catch season three of The Legend of Vox Machina October 3rd on Amazon Prime. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. Build as a political dramedy and kind of based on a true story, Mud Key is a film about what happens when a progressive lesbian couple collide with a conservative straight couple on a bucolic island in the Florida Keys. He tweaked his back. We're hoping to not have to do an MRI or even worse, spinal surgery. For now, we're trying acupuncture and laser therapy. Where are y'all from? Part time here, part time California. Jesus Christ. Despite sounding like a rejected season of American Horror Story, the trailer for Mud Key very much gives a Lifetime original movie meets a slightly edgier Lifetime original movie. Basically, a lesbian couple crashes their boat into a right-wing couple's campsite. And while the women are waiting for the tide to come back in so they can leave, heated political discourse ensues that ends in hugs, tears, and newfound understanding. Probably. Or maybe they kill each other. You can watch Mud Key October 11th on VOD. Anatomy of Lies is an upcoming docuseries about Elizabeth Finch, the infamous Grey's Anatomy writer best known for lying about having cancer. I let her into my home, into my kids' lives. When you love somebody, you'll ignore red flags till they're hitting you in the head. 
Elizabeth Finch not only lied about having cancer, but it seems she damn near fabricated her entire life history. And not to spoil the docuseries for those of you who aren't familiar with Elizabeth's story already, but her ex-wife, Jen Bayer, was actually instrumental in exposing Elizabeth's lies to the world. Therefore, much of the documentary is from Jen's perspective. You can catch Anatomy of Lies October 15th on Peacock. All I wanna get is a little bit Fanatical, The Catfishing of Tegan and Sarah is an upcoming documentary about the never before told story of Fegan, AKA Fake Tegan, a hacker who stole Tegan's identity and proceeded to take advantage of Tegan and Sarah's fans, as well as disseminate Tegan's personal information online. At some point she sent me a shared drive and a password, it felt off. So I reached out to her management and got a text that said she has no idea who you are. And I said, well, then Tegan has a big problem. Back during 2011, at the height of their fame, a very bad actor hacked into some of Tegan's personal files and began sharing them amongst Tegan and Sarah's community of fans, which was bad enough. But this person then began pretending to be Tegan, even entering into multiple online romances with fans as Tegan. I have to say, this is one of the most crazy and elaborate catfish schemes I've ever heard of. And if you wanna know exactly who this person is and how they got caught, make sure to check out Fanatical, The Catfishing of Tegan and Sarah, October 18th on Hulu. It feels good to love somebody and somebody I do want to go over just a few quick mentions. The following are shows that have included queer characters in past seasons and may or may not include them in current and future seasons. First up is Heartstopper, a show I've never watched but have heard many good things about, including that there is prominent and continued sapphic representation. The third season of Heartstopper drops October 2nd on Netflix. Over on Paramount Plus, Star Trek Lower Decks is back with its fifth season. And if memory serves me correctly, I believe the main character of this show might be a friend of Dorothy. How old are you? You can catch the fifth season of Star Trek Lower Decks on October 5th. American Horror Stories is back for some reason. I'm kidding. I won't lie, I haven't watched past season one of this show because I didn't want to. American Horror Stories season four premieres October 15th on FX and then a day or so later on Hulu. Jurassic World Chaos Theory is back for its second season. And if it seems like I was just talking about Jurassic World Chaos Theories, it's because I was five months ago when season one dropped in May. Jurassic World Chaos Theories second season drops October 18th on Netflix. Special Ops Lioness is back for its second season. And despite how much sapphics seem to enjoy this show, I still refuse to pay for Paramount Plus. I don't give a fuck. But for those of you with disposable income to burn, you can catch the second season of Special Ops Lioness October 27th on Paramount+. Plus. After multiple video games, film adaptations, comic books, and novels, the Lara Croft Tomb Raider franchise has finally gotten its own animated series. History doesn't always tell us the whole truth because the real truth is too difficult for most to bear. I have to figure out what this is all about. For those of you who've never watched any of the Tomb Raider films or played the video games, the franchise focuses on fictional British archaeologist Lara Croft, who travels around the world in search of lost artifacts, thereby having to infiltrate dangerous tombs and ruins and yada yada yada. And my guess is the animated series will be exactly the same thing. You know what they say, if it ain't broke. Now, although I highly doubt that the animated iteration of Lara Croft will have sapphic leanings, it is worth noting that that Lara's sexuality has been a topic of discussion for years amongst the video game fans as well as the comic book readers. And allegedly, there was even a same-sex kiss that was left on the cutting room floor of one of the video games. You can catch Tomb Raider The Legend of Lara Croft October 10th on Netflix. In the 1970s, a group of women came together to form the Houston Hurricanes, the very first women's professional full tackle football team in the country. And 
the documentary, The Hurricanes, details its controversial start, its untimely ending, and a reunion that's been 50 years in the making. The Hurricanes documentary has been called a pigskin, real-life version of A League of Their Own. So if sporty ladies are your thing, you can check out The Hurricanes documentary in super limited theaters October 5th. As always, I have to give a quick shout out to my big spender patrons, Angel, Mary, Angie, and Lucia. Also, if you're interested in more content from your girl, definitely consider joining Patreon. I have some new videos finally dropping next week, and later this month, I will also be resurrecting the Queer She Said pod just for Patreon. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, the link, as always, is in the description. And you know what else is in the description? Millennial Threads the only merch shop in existence that all millennials prefer two to one. Not to mention nine rolls of millennial threads is equal to 36 rolls. <laughs> what? As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to let me know which show or film you're most looking forward to and I'll see you in the next one.